This week on the Push Ball Lights podcast, we have the pulleys. Sorry it's slightly late, but, you know, it was Christmas. Three, two, one. I think we're the only people not on strike. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Ball Lights podcast. With myself, Danny. And me, Tom Ball. What's going on, buddy? I can go on strike if you want me to. I'm happy to I mean, be like, you want to end yeah, the podcast sure, now, sure. see you in a bit. Um, like, Merry well. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We're going yeah. on strike. Fuck you guys. Um, yeah, unfortunately. I like yeah. the... Oh, have, I, have I shown you this? So, the BBC. So many people are produce on strike. Produced a calendar, didn't they? Of, of like, who's they on strike. produced the yeah, calendar. Mental. <laughs> mental. So, I, um, the, yeah, the one I, just find it the really one I didn't get... If anybody is one of these who's listening, I doubt it. It's not our demographic, but they do spend a lot of time in a car. A driving yeah, examiner. Driving examiner. Ridiculous. Driving that examiners. One. That's a weird yeah. one, isn't it? I, the thing um, with them striking, I find a bit odd, is it's a bit like, well, okay, so some people don't get the driving test for a little while. Brilliant. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's nurses, what I like. Like, nurses, border nurses, force, police, I'm like, yeah. a bit more immediate, do you know? Um yeah, my um, my brother, uh, my stepbrother, he's a fireman. Uh, and my st- and my brother-in-law actually as well. So they they obviously had their strike for for firefighting and stuff. So obviously I support the 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 fact that they're you know drastically underpaid across the board, policemen, nurses, all you, this sort you, of stuff as well. You, Dan supports uh, arsony, basically. You heard it here first. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. I love fire. I love fire. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do find it. I do find it strange because like. The, the, and again, this is just my maybe just my complete lack of knowledge on politics in general and and economics and economics, and economics as well. Let's go with that, right? <laughs> but like, I just I just think that there's this whole. Th- I just wonder where all this money is going to come from. People want like so. Okay, let's say that every single person gets their Obvious, isn't it? Well, Obvious. yeah, that's, that's what I mean. So let's let's assume that every single person gets their it's like, gets their pay like rise a, that they want. Right? Uh, oil chat that we just had. Just dig 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 dig. Just dig deeper, yeah. Just 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 just. just just pluck money, more money out there now. Um, <laughs> so, like, I was like, I was looking at it. I was like, okay, let's just say that we give the nurses twenty percent increase on their pay. Which, again, whether they deserve it right or wrongly, like, again, let's just say that, that it's all given. Everyone's demands are given into right. Everyone is going to have to pay more tax then. Every single person, like, and it's going to go up for everyone to the point where, like, where does it stop? Like, okay, well, I'm going to strike because I'm getting taxed too much. Like, okay, that person strikes, and then they well, and it's just like, and I understand that, like, obviously if you're in a position where you can't afford to buy food and do all that sort of stuff and you're a nurse, I get it. I understand it. But it does beg the question of like, well, where's it all come from? Because the government are borrowing more money than they've ever borrowed in the the fucking existence. Yes. They're giving it away to all the chumps and yes, they're fucking doing that shit, which again, I agree with is, is all, you know, we should stop that. And and we should highlight that aspect of it. (laughs) We should stop that. Um, Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, (laughs) But but obviously there's all that to highlight, but I just wonder again, as a percentage how much of that is actually it going to go towards paying these extra salaries and stuff like that? It's a weird one, isn't it? Like, so I feel like I've ranted about this previously and like the, the public sector. So but I think, so say previously when people went to go and strike, they happened fairly frequently and it was a whole, it's basically their, their way of doing a bartering system, right? They're like, oh, we, mm. we're undervalued. We're going to go on strike. We need more money, blah, blah, blah. We go for 15% like, and they're like, oh yeah, they go on strike. And then they end up with like 11 or something like that so which is mm. which, which is a traditional what has happened over the last i think it's like 30 40 years and that's what's happened the issue but what's happening right now is the conservative government have decided that they're going to make striking illegal and you're like mm, that's not that's not what happens um you you still need the ability to strike because unfortunately a whole workforce needs the ability to barter um and without striking there isn't much bartering so it's not like private. So that's in the public sector because there's obviously mm. they're more, let's say, um, everyday emergency services, all that kind of stuff. It's a public sector job. Um, and they don't make money. Let's put that very clear. Public sector does not make money. The private mm. sector makes money and pays for the public sector, right? So the the pub, the private the public sector doesn't exist without the private sector, and that's what gets in my go is public sector workers going, oh, these private sectors paying themselves too much money, blah 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 blah. Those are they're the ones out there 
finding it and taking it off other countries and getting more commerce mm. and blah blah making the world go around because that's what happens unfortunately so if 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 the public sector they pay their yeah they, you pay taxes but off the, from the taxes of the private sector the private sector taxes paid for the public sector jobs right that's just what happens um, yeah, I mean, I, so I, mean I, I know they're striking over more than that. And I know there's more to it than that. Yeah, there's obviously like a lot of other, other patient care and all that sort of stuff. But I just, I just, I just think it, and and I think that the whole inflation thing doesn't help because obviously everyone's saying, oh, "I want my pay increase everyone's, and inflation." Everyone's in the same like, boat, right? So, and, just and the argument from, uh, from the government then, of course, is that yeah, but if you then give you the inflation, mate, you got more money to spend, and then you'll spend more of it, and then the inflation will stay high. So, yeah, it's not good for anyone. And like, I don't know. Yeah, I just yeah. I just find it very like I I I look. I mean, obviously it's their their right to do whatever. Um, and and like I say, being in private sector, we're in a position where we can arguably go out and try and earn more money if we wanted to. Um, certainly as self-employed people, you have you know, even more opportunity to do that, I suppose, because you are literally in charge of it. But yeah, um, yeah, it just it just seems a little bit like and and like and like I'm I'm not I literally am not taking sides. I'm just posing the question as to like well, when does it like stop? Like, when does it end? But I don't think it does. When, mate, yeah, you just keep getting, and, and I guess like I guess in the private sector, you get you get higher salaries because you go well. The company's made more money. This has made more money, so you can ask for more money because you know that everyone's yeah. going well. Whereas I suppose that pay increase in public sector isn't related to results necessarily and that sort of stuff. But no. um, I also think you know that going into it, like you get that job because your kind yeah. of job is a bit more guaranteed as well. Like that's the, one of the things about going into public sector. They're jobs always like, well, going to need, yeah, you, we're always yeah. going to need ambulance workers. We're always going to need those people. Um, You'd have thought yeah, so, yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like we probably at some point didn't always need personal trainers. Like we're, yeah. we're a luxury business, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but I just like I said, thought it was, um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. But anyway, we uh, digress. Um what we should be talking about, mate, is that it is the Pulley Awards. I was, I'm on an R in because I'm fucking tired. Um, unfortunately, mm, shit's hit the fan nice. in, in my family. So oh, I've yeah. got to go home faster. Um, get well soon, mum. Go help my parents out because my mum had a little bit of a fall. Just a requirement of people weight train so you don't break yourselves. So rumor um, is she was listening to the Push Pull Legs podcast and heard Tom swear and she fell over. She fell over and has and and has literally literally fractured her hip. So she had had surgery yesterday. So I'm going to go home and be a nice boy and help out um, and do what I need to. I guess. I don't really know what I'm I'm kind of like half and half on like all right I've probably got to help my mum out and do but she's not gonna be moving around is she like she's got to mm. get stuff for her I help my dad out because very traditional marriage that and he's like 74 don't think he's cooked himself a meal in about 40 years um and yeah I'm not too sure he knows how the laundry like room works uh, he'll be fine for a few days mate he'll be uh, fine for a few days sat in his chair just just make sure he's just got some water he'll be fine. <laughs> water the TV remote near his i'm hand. gonna be like all right dad how how many how much scrambled egg have you made if i asked that to dan that'd be like endless months um how many kind of sausage rolls and pork fries have we eaten um cold more than likely um how have we uh have we washed our pants so, so front and back or at least so, turn them inside out at least yeah, do that you in, know. inside yeah, out never understood that but whatever three 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 ways you can do pants right so or four ways really so you can go front back inside out front back is that right yeah so you can do it four apparently, days yeah, yeah four days. Pa- apparently i mean I've, i mean i've never fucking done that, gross you if you've done that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one day with my sweatiness Ugh. Jesus, no, I'm joking. Needs to be thrown away, mate. Never mind, wash. Throwing away, burn. 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 I just, I one day, then I burn them. I burn them. Just get rid of them. That's what they're good for. Nobody wants those. Yeah. Um, the other thing we need to start as well, mate, is we need to start our, our next golf holiday. That's the next thing we need to start looking at. I know. I wasn't. I was, uh, I was talking. I was talking. I was thinking about that. I was like, well. Am I not doing Dubai again in fucking is this is Dubai? Well, uh, Dubai is going to be what? Dubai, Dubai is going to be what? Anywhere between you know between October and, and April. Well, but I did. I did. I the need end to of escape March. in August. I need to escape in August because it's too hot yeah. here to play golf. So that's. I the... did. The, I'm. I'm thinking we got to do Payne's Valley in the states. That's what's happening. Right? Well, after seeing Rick Shields's Palm Beach par three courses, uh, true. Yeah. About there. And Jesus Christ, that's incredible. <laughs> Um, yeah, America could yeah. be one to go to, but um, yeah, just think about it. Be fun. We could just we we'll reach out to the good good people and be like, look, do you want some S and C for a week? And yeah. uh, we'll come play with you. 
S and C nutrition, and you get sorted. You know, guys, we'll help you drive the ball further and lose a little bit of body fat. What more do you want? <laughs> in a week? Exactly. Yeah, we'll do it in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do it in a week. We got to play golf every day and film it. Yeah, so, teach so, us how to play so golf. So our subs go up. That's all right. Um, all good. <laughs> yeah. They do it. They play with these really boring fucking Division One golfers. So it's fine. At least we can have some bands. So do you know what I mean? True. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute vanilla. Um, all right, we should probably do the Pulley Awards. So if anybody has uh, not listened to this show before, you probably probably have. Um, we normally have a, a list of stuff, normally best and worst, um, throughout the year. This one's going to be reasonably interesting, mate. This is, I don't know, it's probably the seventh iteration of this. I'm not too sure. Um, reasonably interesting because this is the first full year you've been in Dubai and not England. So... Yeah you kind of have to have a Dubai kind of thing for Think this. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So and I've I've dabbled in the tastes of Dubai. Um not massively, mm. but yeah. Not not three six five like you have. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Interesting. So I did um I've I've typed pulley into my notes search and I have had I have got some notes from last year's show which is amazing so yeah i've not gone into this completely blind trying to remember what all the categories were which is good i'm quite glad (laughs) right so um yeah mate like without further ado we should we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen awards to give away give out fuck me um there's a lot in it. I mean, it's a lot of yeah. chat. It's a lot of chat. And you notice that my uh, my microphone's better this week. It wasn't actually that bad when I listened back to the the recording. So it was okay. Um, just annoying for you, I'm sure, at the start anyway. Or it was annoying for us trying to trying to yeah. trying yeah, to trying figure, figure out what, what was going on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was happening. But yeah, all good. All right. Um, so we'll go. This is an interesting one because we haven't done we haven't done many protein bars this year, if any. Like I don't, I've not had many. Because, I had a carb fucking, and it wasn't great. So, so we're gonna go in at best protein bar as we'll start soft and go harder, shall we? Um, best protein bar you've had um, this year, Daniel, and that carb killer bar. I mean, I've not had any, mate. Like it's literally gonna have to be a. It's a PhD smart bar birthday cake. It's it's this. It's, it's all right. It's not not incredible. But that's it. Unfortunately, I'd not bring much to this party because it's no. Yeah. Sorry. It's an interesting one. So I think I'm going to go... It's it's only because I've had like shit tons of them. And they're the thing I always go back for. And it's not really a protein bar though. It's like, it's the the, my protein wafers are the most convenient. They're probably not the tastiest thing, but they're the the thing that I think a lot of people have as well. And they're convenient and they do for good, they're like good for breakfast or a good little snack. They're not too high calories. They taste like it's a good seven, eight out of 10. So I feel like I'm bringing that to the, the table. I haven't had anything else really of no. I haven't been, I haven't done a lot of protein bars this year. If I'm really honest. Um, as much as we have previously. I, can, yeah. I, I dread to think how many we've tried 40, 50, 60. Oh, like oh easily. Easily, right? So over the last like three or four years. So yeah, I'm putting out there. Gotta give it that, surely. Let's go with my protein wafer. Um corporate shrill. Or a uh, yeah. P- yeah. <laughs> PhD smart bar. Smart bar. I've had a smart bar. Have you ever had the wafers? No, I've never had them. Uh, I'll just have to trust your opinion on them, mate. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it that. I've minute. had similar right. wafers though. We've had the similar ones, haven't we, before? That yeah, kind of we've had right. similar wafer things. But I still think yeah. those ones, when I think that was the last, the protein bar last time was those, uh, the like Kinder Bueno kind of wafery thing with the inside bit. The yes. I can't remember what they're called now. They were they were great. I haven't bought any more. Maybe I should. It should be a thing. No, I'm I'm needing some more proteiny bar things, snacks. Because then, oh, actually. No. We're going to rename this as protein snack instead of protein okay. bar. 
because yeah, there's only one winner for this. And that is the uh, protein pudding from oh, fucking yeah. Lidl and Audi. Hands down. Yeah. That's that been a massive this year. This yeah. year. Yeah. Like you had the equivalent stuff like when we were in Italy, right? That was yeah. kind of the similar thing. The chocolate like, one pretty, was incredible. Chocolate one was great. Like, oh yeah, mate, that's blown those out of the water. Protein snack. I'm going to change this on my notes. Protein snack. And the reason it's better, the reason we need to change it, and the reason it's better is I would happily have one of those over a protein bar any day. Thousand percent. Yeah. So oh. it's, yeah. The only caveat with those, it does leave, leave your mouth feeling a little bit dry. They're not dry, but like the yeah. aftertastes after like 10 minutes. Or so you're like, all right, I need yeah. I'm need a chocolate child. milk I after need, it. You need a chocolate some, milk after exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You need a little yeah. chocolate milk. No, yeah. that's that's what's going on. Beautiful. For sure. Done. I'm so glad that came to me because I was just like, I'm like, what's in my fridge? I'm like, yes, I have yeah. those still. Beautiful. Um, and they're the the hype's kind of gone, so you can always get them in uh, in Audi now. I walk Rather past than people Audi just the buying the trays of them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just be like, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Leave leave stuff for anything. Um, cool. All right. Big one for you, mate. Big one for the world is um, diet drink of the year. Well, I have about four choices over here, um, which is frustrating, <laughs> to say the least. Um, <laughs> So they've just actually got monster over here. And I'm the white monster. It's in a small can like this. It's not in a big can. It's only a small can. Okay. It doesn't taste as good as no, it does in the UK. No one knows. So that's annoying. Uh, no. I mean, the choices here are Diet Pepsi, Coke Zero, Pepsi Max, like raspberry and lime, which are kind of okay, but nowhere near as good as the UK versions. And then 7 Up, Zero, Seven Up Free and Sprite Zero. Literally, they are the choices of diet drinks. I shit what? you not. That is it. <laughs> They just don't do any diet drinks like that. They don't do any fizzy drinks. The, and the fizzy drinks they do have with sugar in, the options are those again, plus like an orange one. They don't do any sugar-free orange, but they just do a full sugar version. Brilliant. Um, yeah. I'm literally happy. doing I'm literally drinking sugar-free orange right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do that's the one thing I do miss about about the UK is that the Dr. Pepper Zero, the Fanta Fruit Twist Zero, oh, you know, all that. Like. The the choice of, of diet drinks here is, is shocking. Shocking. <laughs> um it's no demand for it though, so no, no one exactly. gives a shit over here about the health, so they just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, yeah. I mean, yeah, probably probably the the one I've definitely purchased the most would be Diet Coke or Diet Fanta or Fanta Zero, yeah. or Fanta Light, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that's my favourite thing I've had most of the time because I have dabbled a fair bit into like a, I think it's, I think it's basically Diet Lilt or Lilt Light or something oh, like that. Lilt I don't Zero. know. Yeah. Yeah. Lilt Zero. Oh, great drink. That's Such been good. Drink. There yeah. we go. I think, I think that's got to take it because I think that's the mm. one I've enjoyed most and I purposely haven't bought it lots because you're like, it's a little bit too much if you have it all the time. It's not an everyday drink. It's like, I'm going to have that. I think at any one time, you have to have two in rotation. One that's like a, a Coke-based one and one that's a fruit-based one. That's your rotation. You can't have, for example, Fanta Fruit Twist Zero and Lilt Zero as your only two options. No, Impossible. Sure. You have to have like a Fanta Fruit Twist with a Pepsi Max, you know, variety or whatever. Or, you know, Coke, I've got, you know. I've got yeah, Fanta Zero and Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. there's my two right now because you're like oh with dinner you're like oh no i can't have like a fruity thing with this meal because the it's too fruity as a meal i need Correct. something a little bit blander you're like yeah. all right it's, it's yeah. the new it's the new red wine white wine with like steak and fish <laughs> Correct. Yeah, it's the new one of them. Yeah. it really is like and more important in my opinion as well there's um, <laughs> there's levels to this so absolutely fine right. <laughs> no, i'm little zero i'm down with that i'm, I'm little afraid. zero on it um cool best Food choice. Uh, what is the best food choice you've had? Or like eat out, best meal you've cooked, anything. Best food choice to me, the, 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 the thing that's changed that this done. year for food choice Ooh. has been pizza, homemade pizza. Ooh. As yeah. a choice, that's a pretty epic choice. 
to be able to have when you want it. And um, see, this is a very much what have you done for me lately? Because I've had a few pizzas over the last two weeks as well. Because I've been like, mm, really fancy a pizza. Yeah. Like, because been, I've been watching football, more sports on, and it's yeah. like, yeah, working a little bit longer. I'm like, fuck it, I'm just gonna order a pizza. Have that. Oh, yeah. That's that's mm. the thing for me. It's been the bit. That's been the main thing that's changed the food choices. This trip. and obviously you know there's good burgers and stuff. Yeah, of course you know all right. But for me, that's been a big change that I've been like actually I really like a pizza. So pizza. my my input will be uh, probably something I've had a bit more this year is like ramen. I've had ramen, a lot of, yeah. I've, I've, I've had a fair bit of kind of ramen based like noodley stuff, um, yeah. which is. Which is but cool. We had oh. um we had a me- we had a first time we had a, there was a Mexican that's just opened that I'm always a bit skeptical about Mexican takeaway really really good so when you're over here next we should try that that'd be the, okay. the, the other one yeah, why are really you skeptical nice. about Mexican takeaway just don't, I don't know I just always assume it would just be like too spicy and I'm like I can't deal with that and then it's just like all <laughs> spicy I'm like oh, I can't eat any I don't like any of it you know um but no this one was actually really good yeah interesting yeah we really like it yeah. I can go. I can go with pizza. I can go with pizza. Like I'll save my like tonkotsu or something like that. If anybody wants some a good ramen places, I got you sorted. So you're fine. Yeah, in London, um, which is good. Went for some I don't know, last week. No, I had some noodles yesterday. So it's good. Yeah. Homemade pizza. It, for me, it's, home... it's better than a barbecue. I've said it again. I'll, say, I'll repeat. Homemade it. It's better than a barbecue pizza. pizza it was good. Like Dan. Daniel did eventually until like the last day fucking made it for me. Fuck. Yeah. I had to invite other humans around for him to make it. I'm not special. too busy playing golf, I um, mean, you know, it's just so yeah. the same. Too busy playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. This is obviously this was still like post COVID kind of thing. I've got um this said lockdown on it. So because this I think this was a category that stayed um post lockdown was best delivery. Because delivery food was a bit bigger um, throughout COVID, mm. obviously. Um, and you can chime in with this because I Dan has ordered food in for uh, in Dubai. So, yeah, what is your best Dubai delivery, mate? The Mexican one, to be honest. I'm, Mexican one. I'm Fuck saying it. Up. It was that good. It was that surprisingly uh, good. So I'm gonna I'm going with that. The burgers and stuff are okay, but they're always better when you eat them out. Like, whereas this, we hadn't eaten out, and you know, it's um, yeah, it was good. Mexican food. What did you have? I can't remember now. A mixture of <laughs> three different things. There was one that we had. It was like a baked thing, and it came with like the. It came with like the. I can't remember what they called it now. It was almost like, it was whatever would have dripped off it. You know, the fat and the spices and stuff. And they put a little pot of it. You could dip it in. It was like it was okay, literally cool. part of the dish. Um, All right. One thing. Yeah. Were were they corn? Corn to, like these tacos? ones were corn, I think. Ta- these were it was this was like quesadillas. These were baked quesadillas with steak and cheese, baked, and it had some oil because it kind of like the oil had seeped into the tortilla and it as it had baked, yeah. and then you had this thing to dip in it. it was I got no time for people who go for wheat fucking like fajitas and stuff like that. No, it's not uh, a thing. A mixture's alright, mate. You can have a mixture. I think. Nah, it's corn. Not you want the corn enough. tortillas? That's the real. That's the real shit. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, considering right. Mexicans don't fucking eat the wheat ones, so it's just like, all right, no, well, what are we doing? Westerners, man. Tells you everything you need to know. Uh, to know right? <laughs> uh, best delivery for me? I'm not too sure. Um, there's a little Korean barbecue place that I have frequented um, this last year that has happened quite a lot. So fried chicken, Korean barbecue, been pretty good. But I, ugh, mate, I fucking love Asian food. I just. Mm-mm, love Asian food, yeah. I do love Asian food, but I also love oh, Mexican food. We can, we can, we can, we can go with Mexican food. We all Mexican. Can, are you gonna give me? Uh, well, is there a name for this restaurant? Or I can't just call it off the top of my head. Mexican food to buy. But it's saved in my Deliveroo, <laughs> so that's all that matters, mate. Is it saved on Deliveroo? So we're good. Just oh, mate. Fine. I mean, yeah. All right. Next one is best burger, but best to buy a burger. We'll do that because, like. Well, I did send one. Did I send it to you? No, I didn't. Did I send it to you? A burger thing no. this week. Oh, mate, I didn't no. send it to you because you're in Dubai. I didn't even fucking send it to you. Oh, uh, brilliant. Where are we going? I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send you it right now. We're gonna get Daniel's uh, uh, take on it. Oh, there we go, Daniel. Where are you? Like right, live reaction of where I'm gonna go. Hopefully, we'll see. 
<laughs> oh no, you did send it to me. Yeah. Did I send it to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the that bone tomahawk. marrow burger. Oh the fuck. Massive oh. Tomahawk, tomahawk steak burger in Dalston. It looks incredible. Guess how much it costs? I don't think. 60 quid. <laughs> 60 quid, yeah. 60 quid, but it's for two people. As you can see, it's fucking massive. Yeah. So I'm definitely. I like the one with yeah. the gravy dip. The gravy dip. Oh, uh, gravy And then the one with the, the bone like marrow stabbed in it as well looks good. Oh. Uh, they look good. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little burger thing. I think in January. Fuck it. Whilst well, everybody else is losing weight. Um <laughs> I'm gonna go and eat some food. Um all right, best burger in Dubai. What are you talking? Well you tried a few. Uh pickles all right, isn't it? You know, we had uh, I had one the other day. Um we were gonna go to pickle, weren't we? It was go it was it was it was nice. Um there's not really a standout to be honest. We've we've tried a couple and they were okay. They were okay, but um, it was just the obsession with sliders, is what the uh, yeah they love the sliders over here, don't they? But um, but pickle was good. I think pickles up there. I, I reckon pickle? give it to pickle. Yeah, I reckon right, give it to pickle. Pickle. Yeah. Mm, that's without an e. People. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Correct. All right. Yeah. Uh, best TV series. Ooh, for me, Gangs of London this year. Gangs of London. Mm-hmm. I have not watched that. You haven't watched it. No. Wow. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you should watch it, mate. Mate. Well, I think... What have I watched this year? What have I watched this year? Um, obviously, Star Wars stuff. I've watched that. Andor was all right. Um, you wouldn't have watched that. Um, the Game of Thrones one. Um, mm-hmm. The Ring of Power was good. Probably the one I like, have properly got excited about watching each time and be like, yeah, yeah let's get that. Because it obviously cost ridiculous amount um but that was good i enjoyed ring of power um what else have i watched i don't know to be fair i can't remember now i feel like because recently it's been those two that i've like binged not binged but yeah mm. we'll separate those into two categories and i'm assuming gangs of uh, london isn't a fantasy thing you can tell it's what not, we're both no, into. it's not a fantasy oh. thing mate. no it's, uh, it's it's about it's about gangs of london um, that, uh, that go to war in best, London. Best, um, best fantasy. There we go. And best. And say that, the way that it's done is it is pretty much a fantasy because it never fucking happens in London. There's no way. I mean, of happens. course it does. Yeah. <laughs> right. What I've seen. So, yeah. Made a veil, rough as fuck. You should mate, see Gales on Saturday mornings. Fuck, yeah, it's paradise, mate. Like, yeah. yeah. They are screaming <laughs> for their, what they have in their feta and spinach rolls. Fuck me. Those mums oh, are like. Mate. Shoot ups, right. everything. I can imagine like, it gets a bit dangerous. It, it is pretty dangerous. Yeah. Anybody have one of those? They are, they are the, they are amazing. Spinach and feta little roll. You wouldn't have thought it. I, I ordered it out of desperation because there wasn't any sausage rolls, and I was like, oh, I need something wow. like savory. It was good, good, good shit. It's not as good um, as sausage roll, though, is it? Let's be honest. It's not. It's not. It's, no, I ordered. Out, I said I ordered out of des- desperation. So yeah, pure I desperation. Like, I just needed. I wanted something savoury, and I didn't. I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not in the mood for a cinnamon bun. I know. Um, I just wow, needed the savoury thing. Yeah, feta. Uh, I've never been a fan of feta. Was never. Uh, would never be something I'd choose. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Love spinach though, so I can't get away from spinach. Best coffee. Ooh, I'm making myself at home, mate. <laughs> that's the thing like yeah you, like coffee shops you're not really going to over there are you anymore not really no not not a huge thing that uh, i bother myself with to be honest um yeah i make it myself as well as anyone now here does so go with that well let's 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 go for this as well so best shit coffee has anybody like stepped up their game in terms of prep? Because I feel like the still actually the best coffee this year has been Hagen for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that is H A G E N. They do have a sign outside side that says best coffee in London. Bit punchy, um, but it is pretty fucking good. It is the one that I've probably that and I've like I go and like chill out and workshop because it's a little bit less busy sometimes. But Hagen is definitely the most popular one. Um, but next year will be interesting because near me, Watch House and Shot are uh, moving into the Marlebone district and village, so they'll be interesting. So it's just one one thing Marlebone village needed was more coffee shops. Definitely, yeah. There's not enough coffee uh, shops. There's, there's not enough coffee shops there, is there? So yeah, definitely. 
uh, who who would have thought that? Um, I tell you, yeah, probably for the for the definitely for the shittest coffee is uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, you God like, awful. You, I thought it was all right when I was in the states. Well, over here, fuck me. I had a black coffee the other day. Isabel wanted a, a donut. I went in and I had black coffee. Oh my god, awful. <laughs> was it like black filter? Yeah, it was like sludge, yeah. just like pure, yeah. like oh my god, like. I, I, it's like do you know it's the kind of coffee I can imagine the Americans love because they've got no taste. Because um, <laughs> over over in the states, you're either a Starbucks person or you're a Dunkin' person, aren't you? Like that's that's like a the big division. They're the two. Um, yeah. It's no cost of the twos that you get. So yeah, because Costa's still the biggest over here, which I don't, I never get. I can't stand Costa. So I mean, You're I'm gonna get bad. Unfortunately, I have to give the prep, even though it's shit coffee, but it's so fucking cheap on my subscription. So yeah, um, yeah. Apart from Starbucks with their eggnog latte, mm, that was that was a good seasonal drink, my friend. So if, if I ever go to Starbucks, it is to get a, a, a like sugary flavored drink. It's yeah, not to get correct. Coffee. It's not to get a coffee. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I need like this weird concoction that you that, that I've yeah. walked past so many adverts that I just need to buy it. So. Unfortunately, that's what happens. So I'm going to go Hagen. Um, if anybody goes into London, there's a, there's actually, I think there's two or three of them now, um, but pretty cool. I think they're Danish, Danish or Swedish or something like that. They're, I think, and I believe they're the biggest coffee drinkers in the world. Um, so they mm-hmm. drink the most coffees per capita, I believe. So they probably know oh, what they're really? talking about. There you go. Yeah. Um, nice. All right. Uh, best social media follow. This year, Daniel, who have you followed? Um, You've enjoyed. I would say uh, (laughs) Four Brothers. Four Brothers, yeah. Called Four Brothers, yeah. Uh, I mean, fairly recent to be fair, but yeah, definitely up there with uh, with one of the one of the best. (laughs) I follow them as well. So yeah, hundred percent. I can I can concur there. So it's pretty decent. Um, yeah, if you if you're into kind of in betweeners humor, I feel like yeah, that kind of thing. I think they're really good follow. Um, not very fitness though, mate. Not very fitness. No, that's probably why I like them. Put me because I don't know for fitness, mate. Now on on Instagram. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Paul Alima is obviously a great follow. Paul Alima is a good follow. I think for for like. Businessy shit. I still, I, I like the intensity of Alex Hormozzi. I think, I think people like that. Um, and he says a lot of, a lot of sense. Uh, very basic yeah, shit, I, basically. I, I mean, I think with Alex Hormozzi, I do like it, but it is very much a case of, I'm a billionaire, so you know, I've done this. It's like, okay, yeah, but you're also a billionaire, so it's easy for you to say that and do that, isn't it? Then, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's just, yeah, one of those, mate. Um, yeah. Fitness follows. Um, I think I think I'll, I'm going to go for there's there's a S and C gym in um, Australia called. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to give this a two. So in terms of fitness follows, if people want to want to want to get their pens and papers out or their phones, probably get the phones because they probably listen to this on their phones. Um, there's probably two or three, I would say. Um, there's a gym in Australia called Athletes Authority, um, which fucking great work they do. Really good exercises. They show people like their athletes work and they just put sessions up and stuff, which is quite cool. If you ever are lacking like ideas for little tidbit kind of exercises and stuff like that and how to move fucking well and basics done incredibly well. But people tend, I think you're going to look, I, I think basics, but they they give me ideas um, and stuff like that. If you're ever lacking for like filler exercises and other stuff, so athletes authority, I think it's called. Um, yeah, athletes authority. You'll see that mm. I follow them. Um, and there's probably Lee Spellman um, or Les Spellman, whatever his name is. But there's um, I like his stuff, but I probably like uh, his business partner more is one of the female coaches. And she's fucking great for just coaching. I really like their videos as well. So they've literally just hired somebody just to be around them when they're coaching their groups, like group of athletes and stuff. And you can, it's it's really cool from just a coaching science point of view. 
how they're relaying information and what demonstrations they use and what queuing points they use. Um, so it's Lee uh, Seven Spellman. Um, and I can't remember her name. Oh, there's another lad as well, Scar Performance, I quite like. Um, he's quite cool. Mm-mm-mm. I can't remember her name. Fucking hell. I'm trying That's to no see good, it. Is it, mate? That's no good, is and it? I'm scrolling my saved posts, and she'll be on there at some point. Um, but I can't find it. Uh, the way I've decided this is I've probably got the most saved posts from Athletes Authority. Um, and then it's just like golf stuff. Um, there we go. Found her. Uh, CC Murray is the lady who C. I was. CC uh, Murray. See. And I think there's an underscore at the end, something like that. Hate that. Confuse you. But yeah, she's good. Good coach. Good coach because people don't realize how important coaching is. Uh, so those are probably my follows of year. So you've gone for funny. I've gone for health and serious. Sums us up. Serious. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, worst social media follow. Um, well, I've probably unfollowed them. So uh, that'd be that. <laughs> if you're a coach, any other coach. So there you go. Just to be, uh, just be controversial. Let me have a little look on here. Um, let me see if I can find I mean, one. probably people like the Liver King. Um, Liver King, I'm sure yeah. he, Probably got a lot of unfollows lately. Um, do you reckon you reckon you got a lot of unfollows lately, or more people went and followed him because they want to see this like madness? I have no idea. I don't actually care. Uh, like, <laughs> I think he's just such a like gimmick. Do you know what I mean? Like he's just a like it's just a marketing ploy, right? And like yeah, one point seven yeah. million followers now. But the thing is, he's gonna have people follow him just to see what stupid shit he does. Like I've got, I guess, a video here of him fucking with a theragun on his abs. Someone's theragun in his abs. Like, literally, some guy. Oh, I think it's because he wants to. See, oh, he's got a fake ab implants, and he's like, obviously, like hitting it with a theragun, right? Unbelievable. Yeah. The thing I find odd about this guy is like, he's like, he's literally like been found to be taking gear. It's like, okay, now no one actually cares about ab implants or not. You're just a phony. Like, you tell when you haven't, like, why would anyone believe what you've got to say? Oh, uh, it's just um mate, it's mental, isn't it? I'm going for him then. Worst social media follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh worst fad. Eating raw liver. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I feel like the that carnival, probably there. Has, has the carnival diet been a big thing this year? Yeah, it's still the mate, it's still rife. It's still it, it honestly, like it is, it, I mean, it goes, it just goes around in circles, right? It does, yeah, it just goes around said. in circles. And, you know, as we've always said, and I think it's one of those where it will come back around again. Um, but the carnivore stuff is making a way, it is more present at the moment. More but so is intermittent fasting, it's coming back again. That's coming back. Mm. That's, that's not really a fad. Like, like I think that's just like okay, just that's all right. That's just a good, eat that's, a, mm-hmm. that's a that's a tactic, isn't it? It's just like a yeah. decent nutrition tactic. I feel like carnival diet is a yeah a fad Stupid. that kind of yeah. fucking comes in fitness in the world of fitness. I don't know what they've been like. I don't think I don't think high rocks is a fad. I think they've created something that is more uh, inclusive in yeah. terms of a, a sport. Not, it's not I, don't, I, I don't think it's a sport. It's a fitness event. Um, but yeah, I don't know. In terms of fads, there's not been any like mad equipment that's come out that I've seen um, at all, which is annoying. No, I haven't. I haven't seen that. I that much. Been crazy. There's not really been any crazy fit. I mean, it's all just the fucking concepts that people come in London come up with. No, they're just the fucking things you need to watch out for. <laughs> um, that is true. Yeah. Just anything that's like, if you go to an S&C class, like a class that is S&T, probably not S&C. Um, it was definitely, probably will be C. Won't be, won't be S. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It will be Which definitely like C. That's to um, some degree. Yeah. Not a, C. Mm. not a fad, but maybe awareness, more people still doing like high rocks and these events and lifting and more into functional fitness and all this shit. Um, just be aware 
on wearing Metcons the whole fucking time, please, people. Um, and not a shoe that might be better for yeah, all these go, events. Go, go do loads of running in Metcons. That's good for you. That. Yeah. And just even like just wearing them day to day. Like people do that. I realize it's flat, but that is one of the issues. So I li- I've taken on, this is probably more because um, in the last, actually the last two days I've taken on um, an, like, an Olympic lifter that wears Metcons all the time as a coach. And and I was like, I was like, you've got knee pain, right? I was like, we've we've well, taken her on because it's a rehab thing, right? And we're trying to then try and get rid of a knee pain. And I was like, one of the things because because she actually works in my gym, but I was like, I've never bothered like giving her like professional. I've been giving her professional advice, but never really gone like looked into it. And I was like, you wear metcons all the time when you train people, and you do like 120 sessions, and then you train yourself in your metcons and stuff like that. And she has um like a fat pad like pain, right? So that little pad that sits under your patella. And so in terminal extension, that thing gets really pissed, like, and compressed. And I was like, when you wear a flat heel, like a flat shoe, you bias your heel more. Therefore, you don't put any pressure on your quad and you just stand in terminal extension on your knee and it really pisses off your knees. So I was like, we need to put tension on your quads and make you lean forward. I almost want you to wear high heels, like, so you bend your knee all the time. Um, to relieve some of that pressure so, very strange just just a just a, a, a thing that people might not realize if you wear flat 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 shoes with like limited like foot activity all day it can be sucky no it's so weird it? anyway like no me. it's not they're fucking well uncomfortable like yeah, i've got a pair and i i never wear them ever uh, like maybe it's just... like every now and again when i've been asked to film something they look all right but then i'm like oh, Fuck this! I wear. I got like some Nike freeze, or I wear my Vans most of the time. Oh, yeah, can't wear a pair of Converse. Still. Exactly, absolutely. So not a fad, but just so worst fad. Carnival diet, raw fit, absolutely fine. Mm. <laughs> All right, worst exercise you've seen this year, Daniel. You must have seen one live in your gym. There's always <clears throat> something happening. Yeah, um, the the one that I. Uh, I and just, just FYI, I've on my notes here. It says burpees have been retired from this category. Yeah, yeah, so. they have a Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> is, I had a guy once on a plank. He was doing a plank on a Swiss ball with his trainer throwing another Swiss ball at him while he was doing it. <laughs> is that like a version of chaos training? I yeah. Guess. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. In a busy gym, the trainer was a fucking idiot. Like, I just that's stupid, isn't it? And then the reason I vote that is because <laughs> that's a that's a PT doing that. I don't want to pick on people who like you know go in the gym and don't really know what they're doing or whatever. Like, I'm, yeah. uh, that's is what it is. This is you're a trained personal trainer, and, and you think that's the the best way to train someone's core in the gym. And I, when I say throwing another Swiss ball, I mean literally like throwing it at him in a busy gym, like. Not going around and tapping him or moving his hips or anything like that. No, no, just throwing a ball at him. Yeah, literally, unbelievable. <laughs> that is. Unbelievable. Yeah, I've not, I've not seen much of that to be honest. That sounds pretty fucking dumb. I've never really got chaos training that much. Like it's very particular. It's like Can the, we also the... retire anything we see on Joel Seidman's Instagram feed. That, <laughs> be, that, that is true. I mean, yeah, like can we just bring back? That's probably where you got it from. The safety bar push outs with the uh, mm. on racked safety bar and you push it out and like does that lad under, understand physics whatsoever? Like that takes no effort. Like could, Isabel could push that out. It's like yeah. it's fine. <laughs> and everyone, yeah, load it up. Yeah, of course it doesn't matter. It's still spin on the same axis, so yeah. <laughs> just put it around it. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I love those. Yeah, we can. We have to retire Joel Seaman. There's another guy that really. I think I still follow him, and it really annoys me. And he does these weird. He just looks like he's never played sport ever, but he's doing all these sport movements. I know who you mean because I know we've shared it before. I think. And I like, think so. Like, yeah, and, it, yeah, and it's like similar shit. And I think Joel Seaman always likes it, and I'm like. Yeah, you're in the same boat, but I think he's like, no, I'm not a seedman. You're like, you are though, aren't you? Oh, you are. It's like, yeah, you are. Yeah, it's eccentric funny. isometrics. Um, did you? I sent you that post the other day, didn't I? Of like, he was like, I can do this because I do this, and he was like deep squatting, and then he was like, I can deep squat. 
because I partial squat. What? <laughs> Obviously, mm -hmm. he said, because I do eccentric isometrics. I can deep, like, press up and pull up because I do eccentric isometrics. And I, I said, I was like, this just makes no sense. I can do this because I've never done this before. What? That doesn't make any sense. No. Dan can drive the green on a par four because he hits his putter in no way. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. like, okay. It's just fucking madness. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll go for Dan's PT, not Dan's PT, but Dan's PT. Um, throwing yeah. balls in mm -hmm. all right ah, best exercise of the year so mm. last year is it going to be a return and it was just the simple goblet squat yeah exercise. Is it going to be good exercise <laughs> tell you what I like I've liked this year and my clients will hate me for it is the Copenhagen plank Ooh. I think it's a good movement not many people can do it I think it's an area that I think that is massively underappreciated and one that will actually contribute a lot to injury prevention athletic movement a little bit more um and i think the bang for your buck you get from it much like a goblet squat bang for your buck there is very very high because people just don't fucking train it um yeah. i think that's quite good mm. and alongside that as a as an aside to that also is a cossack squat is also again my clients hate me for that is moving and you know as you know you're the one that always I suppose pushes me of this way of thinking is not just thinking such or plain thinking actually we move other ways you fucking idiot and that was one of the things that I was like actually I've forgotten that I mean not I mean I remember I was doing it in COVID at home with kettlebells and stuff it's always been the last yeah, couple of yeah. years but but it's been one of those things where combined with the Copenhagen planks a lot of my clients have been like fucking hell this is hard but then they're like oh my squat's got loads better oh I feel loads more stable on one leg doing Bulgarians like yeah, 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 I wonder yeah. why <laughs> um, you know it's you know, my hips feel loads better yeah they will do um, so yeah it's it's I think those two for me as a combination uh, incorporate that to train in a bit of because everyone's doing abduction work everyone's doing the, the glutes to the side and the kickbacks and the glutes and no one's really thinking about okay well my hips can do all the shit um i quite yeah like. people don't yeah people don't look at your internal rotators ever on their leg only external rotators they're just like yeah because that gets my bum you're like yeah it's the same old thing that i've like said it's like all right what about the other side you can only accelerate as far like as fast as you can slow down right you have to be able to decelerate it it's, it's the same as injury prevention that's what mm -hmm. happens it's awesome having really 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 thick glutes that are really powerful but if you are unable to lower that weight, then you're you're still a suck. Yeah. And like, I think yeah. also as well, like if I was training more athletic people, and maybe it's something I'll incorporate a little bit more, maybe into warm-ups and stuff, but also it's hip flexor strength. People aren't training hip flexor. Ah, hip flexor people, strength. yeah, yeah. I I I mean, I think I put up a story yesterday of like um got I think it's more a hamstring hold, but it's like a Bosch hold, um, a um, Bosch hold or whatever it is with hip flexor banded. It just has to be banded, mm -hmm. like stuff like that in like prone positions, in like supine positions. I do them in plank positions as well. I tend mm -hmm. to put in banded hip flexion in a lot of those positions because one, holding it's boring and they might as well do something else whilst they're there. And two, they need hip flexor strength. If any runner is not doing that, then it's madness if they're not. Like yeah. the ability of being able to like quickly do that and be able to lift your leg because still the the hip is the biggest driver for like running massively just like to yeah. recycle and go through um no yeah. it's, probably, it's probably the glutes aren't firing it's probably the definitely that and it and then they're like you've got tight tight hip flexors why is that because they're fucking weak as piss that's why yeah. um yeah. yeah not not because the glutes aren't firing and that's fine it's just like maybe look at the other side um yeah they're too short you need to stretch them out no we need to train them and then they'll be fine. Right? It's mm -hmm. um, for me, probably I've done a lot more calf-based training this year. Um, mainly in, I think, calves in different variances of knee flexion. Um, I think people, and a lot of more heel hovers in calf work and like split squats work and stuff like that. Yeah, so the floating, more the floating heel. Floating, the floating heel and the calf raises and stuff like that. So... I think that's probably the thing. I probably, I definitely programmed more into people with good beneficial results for like vertical jump height and like 10 yard like sprints and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, Copenhagen's are solid. Um, side plank stuff, solid. Um, anything else? Not really. My personal favorite exercise that I've uh, done this year is a post. Is it? I can't remember what it's even fucking called. I I was like, like I just took a variation of a chop or a lift 
of a cable and I was facing away and I internally rotated into a hip and then put it in front of me. And it's, it's the best exercise I've given to people to sort out um, like a lot of like reactiveness in terms of stability and loading up on their kind of P chain a little bit more. Um, yeah, some people have sucked doing it big time. Definitely the movement that I've noticed sorted my hips out more this year, I think, maybe more solid. Um, but yeah, I posted on a reel about like two months ago, but I can't remember what I called it. I don't know what it's called, if I'm honest. It was, yeah, it's it's up, me, me pissing around um, after watching some of the stuff. And I was like, why can't I do it this way? Um, it's like a posterior, um, I can ask... I know at least two or three of my clients online have got it right now. They know what I'm talking about. Message me what I've called it. Um, I'm not going to bother to try this and see what I've called it. Posterior cable lift. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> you should call it the um, hall. The hall. The hall, the hall lift. Um, all right, mate. Last day, last category. Um, podcast of the year. Um. I so have what to podcasts, give it to. What for podcast me, have you been listening to? Well, recently, uh, someone... No, no, no. Get your podcasts out. No. Well, well it's on YouTube, it. so it's not a podcast, so it's on a YouTube channel. Is all the old Ricky Gervais XFM um... radio shows are absolutely incredible. He was on a stint. So basically, this is from like 2004. So like Office hadn't been out very long. And he just started on. He just started doing bits on the radio. Him, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So obviously they've developed. Obviously over the last 15, 18 years, must be eighteen years nearly now. Twenty, even twenty twenty two, they've been doing stuff together. I think. Yeah. Um. You know, he's done his idiot abroad, all this sort of stuff. And he started, but this is how he started. And I like listening to it because it's the raw, unedited. He was just a moron, like, and he just had a really weird view of the world. And obviously nowadays he kind of plays up to the character a bit more, and you know he's been he's been put in front of the TV and stuff. But it is literally what made them start that whole thing. Is it's the XFM radio shows? They did a two-hour radio show on a Saturday um, for years, alongside doing the office and all these other things. And basically, someone has found the recordings, taken out all the songs and all the adverts, and just put them talking, and they cut it perfectly. And so this two-hour show becomes a one-hour show. And they've, honest to God, there's just hundreds of them online yeah like now they found them all from all the from like from how many years they were doing it if you imagine they did one a week whatever and they are so good to listen to it's such easy listening and i piss myself laughing you forget about the world for an hour it's so good and that's been my that's been my find of the year uh in terms of podcast podcast of the year i mean diary ceo has been okay even a few episodes that have been good on that but this this one has been uh has been good there's one episode of diary ceo that i think every online coach needs to listen to and it's the one with piers morgan by the way Anyone needs to listen to that. Um, I actually really, I didn't know much about him before that, but listening to that podcast made me respect him a little bit more, which sounds crazy because people don't right. like him. Um, but I think a lot of online coaches can take a lot from that one episode. If I was going to, if I was going to recommend one episode, because I don't know any episodes of the Carpenter, mm. one, it's just a fucking brilliant, all of them. <laughs> but that one episode of Diary CEO really hit home to me as a coach and like why we should do what we do on social media. Um, he talks a lot about why it's important that you give your opinion and you know all that sort of stuff so yeah um that is if it was an episode it'd be that if it was an actual full podcast it would be the, the ricky gervais show on um on youtube unbelievable nice. just search ricky just search ricky gervais xfm shows they'll all come up <laughs> hundreds of them decent mine have been very uh very bland i feel like i'm really like i've listened the obviously more business minded I've been listening to the game with Alex Hormozy but it's just like it's I have to listen I listen to like two or three and then I can't listen to it like for a week because you're like all right I've got to think about what he said and it's like it's always very intense and I'm like all right it's it's not what I want to listen to all the time I have to feel in that mood to be like I'm in the mood to be motivated and do this and it's like it's very motivating business orientated thing and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be really, really on it for my business. And then you're like, all right, I need to chill out and uh, yeah. listen to it. Stupid. So I've still listened to Off Menu because I'm a foodie. Um, um, I listen to Br Rob Bryden's podcast. It's called Bryden and, um, which is very chilled. It's like old man um, kind of just chatting to random people. And he has a very, very nice way about him. So those are probably the three that I've listened to most over this year. Um, Rick Shields. Vanilla though in it. Um, 
and if it's you don't just, like golf, it's, it's don't, just the easiest one in the background. It's just yeah, the easiest yeah. one in the background. I wouldn't say it's like the most amazing podcast in the world, but it's just something to listen to if you if you like golf. Yeah. Basically. If you like golf, that's the only reason why you'd listen to it. Don't don't listen to it if you don't like golf. Fuck me. I do think you a lot of it. the. I do have to say, I think a lot of the golf content is very vanilla. Yeah, the good good guys are okay, but even they're not the biggest personalities. This, this is the is no. better than what the others do, but there's yeah. not a lot of, of of huge amounts of comedy and piss taking and swearing and stuff like that. Do you know, like I think there's a real gap for it. I think maybe we should turn this into a podcast. Maybe we should do that a golf podcast. We turn it into a podcast. Ones. What we've we been doing? Turn into a golf one. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, yeah but i mean we don't i also think we don't care enough about the game we're not involved in the game enough to give a shit do you know what i mean enough yeah, to have the opinions good. but um there is certainly a big gap for people with with personality in, in golf doing podcasts and youtube i think in general because a lot of youtubers you watch peter finch is boring as fuck there's oh, another guy on there that i get boring. shown james robinson again not the most exciting guy in the world um, yeah i suppose golf attracts those kind of people to you but... <laughs> that's why we're there <laughs> yeah <laughs> Making friends, yeah, That's it, mate. Um, yeah, and then I listen. I listen to the same fucking NFL podcast for the last like twelve years. So that that's longevity. That is fucking. They do three to four shows a week. Oh, it's just boring, isn't it, mate? It's just NFL. It's just boring. Can't deal with it. <laughs> I don't listen to every single one like a week, but yeah. Certain ones I do listen to. Fucking it, mate, crazy. All right, we'll we'll give it to Ricky Gervais because that sounds like. Uh, I can concur that I find those, those like a lot fucking hilarious. So beautiful. Yeah, honestly, go back and listen to it. it. It is very, very entertaining. Um, and so easy to listen to and have one in the background. Like if you listen to that on like the journey on like your journey into work or on the tube, you would find yourself laughing on the tube. You would be like, you'd look like that guy, which is quite fun. Yeah. There you go. Nice. All right. That brings us to a close. Beautiful. Yeah. Another year. Thank you for listening, guys. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're still going to speak to Dan in the new year. Much uh, appreciated that you listened. But next year, like I said, <laughs> we, we've talked about that. We're going to try and get some guests on once a month. We're going to get a guest on. So hang around for the, the cool guests. Yeah, we'll probably put it as a series as well. So we'll probably we'll just release it once a month, even if we uh, we put it, if we record like that. Series-wise, we'll see you next time. So that'll be more fun. Um, Bring the dream gym. Day. The dream gym day. Into fruition. Because I want you to do it for fucking ever. So, yeah. Since we had the idea. So, ooh. Good. All right. Any other business, Daniel? Not for me. Not for me. There's no blitz. There's no launches. There's no... No. Nothing. Enjoy Christmas. Have a good one. Yeah, fucking... Go enjoy Christmas. Go eat everything. Uh, ignore everybody who says tactically eat around Christmas and all that kind of stuff and just go have some fun. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Guys. We'll catch you in the new year. See you later.